Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use UI slider components in conjunction with the Singleton Audio Manager, which you can find down below in the description. And we're going to show how you can have the slider component whenever you change the volume here to actually update the audio mixer and the audio manager. So it'll come in here and update the volumes for both master, sound, and music respectively on all of these three sliders. And we'll do that just by adding in a very simple script. So I'm going to add component and I'll create a new one here. We'll call this uh, sound updater. And this will be a new mono behavior script. So let's go ahead and edit this script inside of Visual Studio. In the script, we're going to need a reference to a few different things. So in the audio manager, uh, which we can import in from the Chris Tutorials namespace, there is an enum called audio channel. And this audio channel, which we will want to set in this inspector, so we're going to make this public, uh, we'll reference if we're talking about the master, the sound, or the music channel. So depending on what you set here, it'll update that specific channel. So we can just call this uh, channel there. In addition, uh, we're going to want a reference to a text UI component in script. So um, we could call this sound levels text, I guess. And the purpose of this is going to be that whenever we update this slider, we also want it to update this text um, with a new text display. So it might say master sound uh, 50 out of 100. And then if it changes again, it becomes master sound 75 out of 100. So so on and so forth. We can also add in um, a starting screen, a, a starting string for that text. So we could call this channel name and we could have it default to master sound. And then whenever we update this text, it's also going to start with this string and then add in the actual values of the slider. Um, and since we're going to reference the values of the slider, we need either a private or public slider component. So I could call this uh, private slider. And we could just pick that up on the awake function. So whenever the game object exists in the scene, it's going to go ahead and grab a reference to the slider component. We can do that with get component here and we do slider. So this obviously depends on you attaching the sound updater to a, a, a game object that has a slider on it. And now all we need to do is write a method that can be called when the on value changed of the slider occurs. And we'll add that in as a delegate in the inspector. So let's see here, we can call this public void. Uh, it should be void, of course, because if you attach a method in the inspector, it can't return anything but void. And we can call this method update sound levels, whatever makes sense to you. And in order to update the sound levels in the text, we're going to need to get the value out of the slider. You can see that that's a float. So float slider value equals slider dot value. So this is going to be out of one. So it's going to be from zero to one, but we actually want it to be out of a hundred, both when we update our text and when we update the audio manager, uh, because it sets its volume based on a scale from one to 100 or zero to 100. Uh, so we're going to multiply that by 100. And I guess we can change this to an ant. Cast it as an ant, just for good measure and semicolon. So now with this new value, we can update the audio manager. So the important thing here is going to be audio manager. Uh, and we get the instance because it's a singleton. Uh, set volume. And now we just need to specify the audio channel, which obviously we've set up here. So it's going to be the channel of the script. OK, so just with that, it's already gone ahead and updated the audio manager's volume, which is going to update it inside of the audio mixer. So that's what we're looking for with regards to that. But let's also go ahead and make this update the text as well. So we're going to want to take the sound levels text. And we're going to make it equal to starting with the channel name. And then we might do something like add in double dots every time the actual value here. So slider value, and we could put a slash um, to make it out of and then max value is going to be 100 in this case. So just like that, we can update the text and we can update the volume. 
And that's pretty much it. So as long as you know what channel you're updating, it's very easy to use this set volume function. Um, let's go back out to the Unity editor. So I'm gonna add in this new sound updater script. You can see we can change the channel because it's an enum. So master sound music are the three available by default. Uh, we're going to want to reference the text. So in this case, I have a text object below here, which is where it says master volume. And the final thing we should do here is to drop the script into the on value changed event of the slider. And we can call the function we created. So update sound levels. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and updated all three of these sliders to have the sound updater script we wrote. And on each of the sliders associated with that, we are calling the respective scripts. So down here, it's going to call that one update sound levels with these values we've set. So let's go ahead and hit play. And as long as the UI is playing nice with us, it should work here. So as you can see, when we adjust the slider, it does change the master, the sound and the music respectively. But I know I made a slight mistake inside of the script. We can go ahead and fix that quite easily though. So where it says slider value, int slider value times 100, uh, order of operation, we want the times 100 to take place before changing it to an int. Otherwise, we won't be able to get that range of values from zero to 100. So let's go ahead and play the scene back one more time. And as you can see now, the uh, audio manager is updating properly, uh, going to a volume of negative 20 decibels off the base volume if you bring it down to one. And if you drop it to zero, it sets it to negative 80 decibels. Everything in between is going to be something in between zero and that negative amount. Uh, of course, in the actual game object that you create, the audio manager, which you have to instantiate before you can use all this, uh, you can set the lowest decibels before mute right over here. So if you want it to drop down to negative 30 or something like that here, you can do that. Uh, I just found negative 20 to be a pretty good amount. So if you want to go ahead and download the audio manager script off of my Gumroad, you can go ahead and do so. If you didn't watch my first tutorial, the main advantages is that it is a singleton object that gets created automatically with the yeah, singleton library. Uh, so you just have to create it as a scriptable object and basically create it in your resources directory like so. And after that, you can just call audio manager play and play any audio clip from any game object at any time. You won't need to add in audio source components to any of your game objects anymore because this will create it on demand, which is pretty cool. So I'll leave the link to that in the description. I've been Chris. I hope you found this tutorial cool and I will see you guys in my future video content.